I'm feeling very chilled today. I don't know what it is. I don't mean chilled cold because we seem to have had a break in the weather and it's become very mild. I think we've got a bit of cool weather to come straight after this, but I think I'm going to make the most of this mild weather just to pot around and do a few outstanding jobs. Well, this is one of those jobs, having put in all the effort to get the compost around the plot. I just need to make sure that I spread it fairly evenly across the soil because it's no good moving it late in the day. The whole idea of no dig is that this compost has time to settle and the organisms can start producing and getting embedded into the compost. And that way that aids the root growth of the plant. So I wanna get this in a position where I can leave it and it'll be in its final state. And then hopefully those organisms will get cracking and work their way into the compost. And overall, the whole bed gets fed and I got a bit of a quandary now because there was a suggestion that perhaps I don't plant onions into this and I use one of my squash beds to plant onions into. I think the general consensus was that having courgettes next to pumpkins and squash can cause some cross fertilization and that's best avoided. Although, I tend not to save seed of squash and pumpkin because I'm always looking to grow something a bit different or I want to make sure that there's a good success rate. So I tend to buy fresh. And if that's the case, it doesn't quite make as much difference if I grow courgettes next to squash and pumpkins. So jury's out at the moment. I haven't fully decided, but it's good to get this compost spread, whatever I grow in it. Well, I've got two temperatures to take today and I covered both these compost heaps in the interest of getting some additional warmth. So if I remember rightly, it was 36, 38 degrees centigrade when I tested this a week or so back. And if I pop that in there now, it's, well, it's cooled down incredibly. It's sitting around 14 to 16 degrees centigrade. So this one is definitely cooled right down, but I'm gonna cover it back up and then we'll test the temperature of the new compost heap that I last put together. Right, cover this one up and go and have a look. I put some weights on top of this one just to make sure the covers didn't blow off. So we'll push those back and put the trusty thermometer down in the middle of this. Well, it's a very different picture because this is that much fresher and we're just approaching 40 degrees centigrade, which is into the green zone for compost making. And I think it'll just edge up, but what's clear is it's doing nicely. And that's been the pattern, a new load of compost and, or manure, get it into the bay and the temperature lifts. And I'm gonna soon be trying to amalgamate some of these and turning them over just to dry that heat up again. We'll see how this one does over the next few days. Well, blanket weed in my pond is at an absolute minimum now. And I'm just gonna use this twizzling stick method, which seems to work very successfully to get the remainder out, pull this grass out while I'm at it. And I'll just put this blanket weed by the side of the pond when it's finished, so that if there is any creatures inside it, they can crawl back into the pond 
but I don't think so. And there's not a great deal of it, but it's good to get it out. You gotta get it going. If you get a bit wrapped and it starts to cling to the stick and then you can move forward. There we go. Any more for any more. I think that's probably it. I've not seen that newt that Mrs. K saw, but the pond is looking nice and clear and in good order. So fingers crossed, it'll be teeming with life very soon. And hopefully my lily will have a flower this year. We'll see. But there's a little bit of bindweed around the edge here. It's actually not quite long enough to scoop up. But I'll have to keep an eye on it. Right, one more bit of grass. I'm good to go. I'm just going to lift this and see what's underneath it. Absolutely nothing. Oh well. Well, whilst I'm getting down on my knees, I'm going to do this horrible job, which is to take some of this grass away from the base of the gooseberries and black currants. And this sort of weeding, ah, it's a bit of a pain, but it always helps any plant, in my opinion, and that includes these fruit bushes, if they're not trying to compete with really strong weed growth. So getting this out, I'm hoping, helps the general welfare of the bush during the coming weeks and months. And I probably need to come back because these roots are well and truly entrenched, but it's important to get them clear in my view. So I'm gonna work my way around. It'll probably take me half an hour, but you won't have to watch because I'm gonna speed it up for you. Well, that's a lot better. I think I'll probably end up having to have another go fairly soon. And I need to work down right by the sides of the plants in some cases to get rid of some of that more, well, persistent weed. But it's great getting down close because you see things you haven't noticed. And it's great there to see the rhubarb starting to bud. There's a good four or five buds on that one. And then, as you lift some of the leaves that are on top, so it reveals a bit of leaf growth. But to be honest, I'm gonna keep that covered because the frost might just have a go at it. I'm looking at the others. There's one there starting to bud. And this one, this is a different variety and it seems to be just a little bit later, although there is a bud there and another one there. Take that weed out when I'm here. Good times. Well, I can see quite a lot of growth in the oregano down here. It makes a real solid mound. So I think it's a good time just to clip out all of these old branches or stems because once those leaves grow quite high, then you can only really cut them at the top of the mound. And this way, if you cut them low, then those leaves will very soon grow over the top. There's a bit of grass in here as well to get out, but I can already get a sort of smell from this, which is so evocative of summer, but we're a little way off that yet. So just gonna work my way around and get this mound of oregano ready to carry on growing. Well, that made a very big difference in this mound of oregano, or as our friends across the pond say, oregano, is looking really very healthy. Just got to keep this grass out of it. Okay, well, that gives that a chance. I'm going to leave these canes in. This is where I put the sweet peas last year and they were brilliant. So same again this year. Well, these trees are proper dormant now. 
So this is the time to do any shaping or removal of any stray branches that you want to. And all I'm going to do with this one is just keep it contained a little bit. And I've got a couple of small branches, which I'm going to cut at 45 degrees and just make sure that all the growth is going into the upper branches. And this is uh, from memory a plum. I think it's a Victoria plum, but I'd need to go back to my notes to check. Right, I'm going to move on to the others and see what needs to be done. Ah, this one has got some bad sections of canker in it and it's really not going to survive. So I don't think I'm going to waste too much time, but if you were pruning this, I think you'd be taking away these lower branches because they are just not where you want the growth to be. And I don't think that one's going to survive, but maybe we'll see. It's looking very weak here. I think I might be finding myself a couple of new apple trees. So this is proper healthy tree and once again I'm going to take off these lower branches because I just don't want the growth in them and we'll keep all the growth in the upper part of the bush. Same here, just the lower ones. And the same again. Now with the pear tree, I'm gonna wait a while before I do a full prune, but there are some things that are blindingly obvious and they are where these branches are just getting a little bit too low to the ground. And I've got a few that are sticking into the path, which are, well, should we say troublesome? So I'm going to do a little bit of minor pruning and then I'll assess what needs doing in a few weeks time. Well, whilst I've got a pruning momentum, I'm just gonna take some lower hanging branches off of this holly tree. So it's all about gaining access really to my thoroughfare because I don't wanna be ducking and weaving or catch my eye. So I'm gonna take out some of the low hanging branches and this is gonna be a minor prune really, but it is important because I don't want any accidents. I'm also gonna take away these new areas of growth because I just don't want another branch to come out of this tree. It's mature enough and got a good shape. So I just don't want any energy going into this sort of growth when it can go into the main body of the tree. There we go. And there are some tiny little ones coming out in various locations, but they're all gone now. Well, it's great to have a tree like this, but it's also got to be workable and safe. So it is now. Now, one of the viewers, in fact, a subscriber, was explaining to me how they were keeping the warmth in their seedlings using polystyrene boxes, which they'd acquired. And of course, that's a method which I use quite a bit. Well, at least certainly with my leeks. And this here box is the key to getting my leeks going. And it does keep them warm. It also makes sure I get the lid off. There we go. That we get a nice deep root because that's a fairly substantial container. And of course it's got holes in the bottom to allow drainage. So I'm gonna fill this up with my homemade seed compost and see if we can get some leaks started nice and early. Well, I got asked some questions about seed sowing, what seeds I buy, whether I buy expensive ones or whether I try and keep to the more budget varieties. And the honest answer is, well, I buy what I need to. And usually a packet can last me two or even three years. So that really brings the price down. But generally, 
I try and look for reasonably priced. The biggest motivation I have is to buy seed that is relatively close to me because that comes from seed providers who have trialled those seeds in an environment that's not too dissimilar to mine and I think that that always helps. But that isn't always the case. Some seeds like my carrots, Sweet Candle F1, are probably the most expensive and they come from an online provider. Let me show you what I've recently bought. So these seeds have come from Just Seed and I ordered some flowers and I ordered my F1 candle carrot because I found that price-wise these were very reasonable indeed and that Sweet Candle F1 200 seeds I think was just a couple of pounds and they're normally a bit dearer than that and then I bought well a fair old amount of lobelia because we had such great show of lobelia last year in the garden and on the plot that I decided I'm going to go for them in a big way just a few different varieties so just seed I think probably is one of the more pocket friendly seed providers but today I'm going to grow my leeks I'm going to sow them in that polystyrene pot and this is Musselburgh which is a firm favourite of mine. So here we go. So there's the polystyrene pot and all I'm going to do is sprinkle these over the top. I'm not going to water because it's fairly moist and with the cold weather I don't want it to freeze. So I'm going to sow these in here. I will cover this for a couple of days just to keep the warmth in and then a few days later take that off and use the same approach as I am with the onions which is just to cover them up with a number of translucent layers so that we can get some light in but keep the warmth in. Right I'll get these sown. Well that's me done for today. I hope you've enjoyed my little pot around the plot in what is a very mild day and most relaxing. Well if you did why not subscribe and if you want my uploads then they go up on a Wednesday and a Sunday at 8 p.m. And why not click on the like button as well. Good times.